budget for India's power sector, the end of the lockdown may not bring much relief. The sector has witnessed a sharp drop in demand because any industrial establishment that has been deemed to be non-essential has been shut. Data from the Power System Operation Corporation, the demand for power on the 26th of March was 26% lower than on the 18th of March. And this is expected to dip further as the lockdown progresses. Industry body CII believes that power distribution companies may face a reduction in collections from both commercial and residential collections and it may take between four to six months after the lockdown lifts for things to stabilize. It estimates an additional liquidity gap of 25,000 crores in the sector over the next two to three months. In addition, Discoms owed 90,000 crore rupees to power generation and transmission companies before the lockdown kicked in. This number is expected to rise substantially, especially after one factors in the three-month moratorium for Discoms on their dues to power generation and transmission companies. To help the power sector cope with the adverse impact of the lockdown and beyond, the CII has put together a list of recommendations and it's a long list. But to discuss that uh, and the challenges that the sector is faced with, joining me today, Tulsi Tanti, the Chairman and Managing Director of Suzlon. Uh, he's also the Chairman of CII's National Committee on Make in India, dealing specifically, specifically with renewable energy. Also with us, Suman Sina, the Chairman and Managing Director of Renew Power. He serves as the Chairman of CII's Council on Renewable Energy. Rahul Munjal, the MD of Hero Motor Energy and Rajiv Ranjan Mishra, the MD of CLP India. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us here on the program. Appreciate your joining us here on this special show. Suman Sinha, let me start by asking you, uh, you know, this has been a sector that has already been besieged with problems. This has only exacerbated the problems. What is the key crisis that the sector faces today? And I'm not just talking about renewables, but for the power sector in general. I, I think, Shireen, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, the sector was already struggling from uh, past dues, as you pointed out, which in the conventional side was about 50 to 60,000 crores. And in the renewable energy space, it's a little bit lower. It's about 10 to 12,000 crores. So total past dues of 60,000 crores, which is already putting a lot of burden on uh, generating companies and then behind the generating companies into the rest of the power value chain. I think what this crisis now does is two things. Number one, uh, power demand has gone down dramatically. Uh, it's gone down during the period of the lockdown by about 25 to 30 percent. Uh, and the interesting part is that the higher paying customers, that is the industrial customers and the commercial and industrial customers, really is where the loss of, uh, of demand is actually happening. And uh, because of that, uh, the revenues of the discounts are going to be hit proportionately disproportionately higher than the 25 to 30 percent. Uh, now, what that will do, therefore, is that for distribution companies that uh, are already not in great financial health, with power demand going down, revenues going oh. down, their ability to service debt is going to uh, service payments is going to become even worse. And so, therefore, over the next two or three months, our sense is that it, it may be harder for the distribution companies to be able to make payments as would have been expected in the normal course. Now, having said that, at least for renewable energy companies, uh, the government has specified very categorically that the must-run status has to continue. And therefore, if there's any demand reduction, it has to come really from other sources of renewable energy, uh, from other sources of generation, uh, not mm. renewable energy. And that's sensible because renewable energy has zero variable cost. And, uh, yeah, and so therefore, it's, you know, it's, it's the cheapest power to keep dispatching at a time when um, when you've already incurred all the costs. So from a national standpoint, that's the right thing to do. Uh, the second thing the government has also stated now is that they are willing to give a moratorium on late payment charges to the discoms, but they've actually told the discoms that they have to keep making all the other payments, which is going to impose a burden on them. But I think it's very important for us to limit the burden at the distribution company end, which are supported by state governments, rather than oh. let it carry on to the rest of the generating sector and then into the rest of the value chain. So I think that is really what will happen over the next uh, three, four months until the situation finally settles down and demand begins to pick up again and collections go up again. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Tanti, what is the expectation as and when this lockdown lifts? We don't know whether it is going to lift on the 14th and the 15th of April. Uh, the expectation is that perhaps uh, it will be more phased and gradual. What's the expectation in terms of demand? And also to the point that Sumanth was making about uh, the value chain and cash flow in the value chain. Uh, uh, you know, what, what are you currently seeing today and what's the expectation? 
Sirin, it is a very clear uh, power sector is passing through the very critical uh, time because it's a uh, dual impact is there. One is demand has substantially reduced almost 30 percent. And second is the liquidity in the in the system. And we also understand the utility situation and the collection situation from the consumer at this current time area. So it will remain a stress situation of the liquidity. This is the biggest challenge and the demand. I feel is there how fast after this uh, lookout will be cleared, how fast uh, the, all the sectors, not just the power sector, all other manufacturing sector, how fast they can come back to the operations and that stabilize. Maybe it takes another 90 days to stabilize like that. So demand can be addressed faster that way. And the second is the most important, the whatever the financial supports are required to the utility company, how fast uh, the government provide from the, the institutes and from the banking systems to fund the utility company as a mm. old outstanding and the next three months point of view, whatever the uh, uncertainty of the payment is there. If it is addressed, I think whole power sector liquidity issue can be stabilized and that is most important because being a manufacturing company biggest challenge we have we have retained all the people and we are paying all the salary we understand in the current situations it has to be honor all the payments for the people first of all but liquidity is supported then mm. uh, all the manufacturing and all the projects uh, people the salary and everything should be paid in time and that will be the most important uh, the uh, criteria of the liquidity should be uh, addressed. I think that's the main challenge for mm. the sector. Uh, yes, so one of the other challenges uh, beyond liquidity that the sector is faced with is the invocation of the force majeure. Rahul Munjal, how much of a concern is that? What is the current situation, uh, you know, that you're seeing across states? Yeah, you know, so... Um... It's only understandable that there is so much disruption in uh, the entire world today. The demand for energy is down, as we've spoken. The demand for energy went down in China. We saw it. We saw in Europe how the demand went down. So it was obvious the demand in India had to go down as well. But that's, that's just the first part. Other than the demand, what about the billing? Today, most of the billing was done manually by joint meter reading. So the meter reading, which is manual, needs to be moved online. So there is some need for digitization there. Then bill presentment and bill collection. And of course, with the monitorium, we know the discoms have no revenue and they will have very low re revenue over the next couple of uh, weeks going forward. So the disruption is huge. And the need for digitization is also equally important as well as the need for liquidity. Today, we need to ensure that at least companies like ours, uh, generation companies, are able in this time of crisis to give enough energy so we can keep our hospitals and the, and the economy which is running. And most importantly, people are in their homes, they need energy. So we need to ensure that energy is being uh, provided 24 by 7 to everybody who needs it. You know, we cannot worsen the crisis from what it is already. Yes, uh, and I, I would imagine the digitization is going to be a big step forward. Uh, and that could perhaps be one of the silver linings that comes through uh, as we grapple with COVID-19. But uh, Rajiv Ranjan Mishra, uh, let me ask you in terms of project implementation and what the impact is likely to be given what we are seeing, not just domestically, but globally as well. Uh, you know, a lot of the solar, pa solar panels continue to be sourced from China. What is uh, the impact likely to be? Well, it's uh, <clears throat> very difficult to say at this point, uh, to be honest, uh, because we obviously do not know how long the uh, lockdown will last first. Uh, don't forget also that uh, we have a large uh, uh, amount of our construction labor, which are from other states, uh, lots of whom have moved back to their home states. And uh, it'll take time for them to come. Um, the only uh, comparable experience we have is that of, uh, in fact, not even China, if we look at Hubei, for instance, where, uh, you know, uh, year-to-date Jan plus Feb uh, demand is down 20 percent. However, uh, you know, um, uh, about 72 percent of SMEs, as per my information, by end of March, and uh, nearly 95 percent of the larger industrial uh, complexes were back, uh, and about 95 percent of the, of the labor force back. Now, China has different ways of doing things, as we all know, and it is uh, quite likely that our pace will be, uh, will be smaller. And therefore, all the projects will get delayed. Mm -hmm. um, what we have requested from CII and from the industry um, to, the, uh, to the government 
particularly in terms of uh, the renewables projects which have already been awarded, is, is to give a six-month blanket extension in the commercial operation dates uh, for all of them. And we hope, um, and one must credit the government here for coming, uh, for taking action on the lockdown um, pretty severely and reasonably early. Um, and with some luck, if we escape um, uh, the worst effects of this outbreak, then, uh, then we are hoping that within a quarter, uh, things will start coming, uh, moving back. And uh, for mobilization of the entire chain, you know, the construction chain, since you asked about uh, new projects, sure. uh, then hopefully a six-month extension should be enough. But uh, still fingers crossed on that and very difficult to forecast exactly uh, the impact on each project. Yes, uh, it is going to be difficult to forecast many things. But Sumantina, let's talk about the way forward now. Some measures have already been announced by the Reserve Bank of India. Uh, uh, you know, the expectation is that the government will step in and provide sectoral relief. So far, that hasn't been forthcoming. Uh, what is it that you would like the government to do on a priority basis to try and address some of the concerns that all of you have raised here? Well, you know, Shireen, first of all, I would say that... Uh... So far, our ministry, that is the Ministry of Renewable Energy, as well as the Ministry of Power, have been extremely responsive in engaging with uh, industry to have conversations, dialogues, to understand the impact on the sector, and to try to find solutions to these problems. And they've been very, very proactive about issuing letters. You talked about force majeure events uh, earlier. Uh, a few of the DISCOMs did try to uh, invoke force majeure. And uh, MNRE was very, very prompt in sending out letters saying that uh, this is not a cause for force majeure and that no curtailment should happen for renewable energy generators and that payments have to happen on time. So I would really commend the ministries uh, of both power and renewable energy uh, and the minister R.K. Singh for uh, being very responsive uh, so far. Now, going forward, I think that while the RBI has announced uh, or has allowed a moratorium, uh, first of all, none of the banks seem to be very forthcoming in that area. So I think the first thing is the banks have to um, decide to uh, actually extend the moratorium to us uh, just in case there are payment delays from uh, distribution companies, which probably will happen. Um, so we should not lead into a default situation because, as you know, our biggest outflows are debt service payments. Uh, and so therefore, we should be able to get some moratorium on that from our lenders. One of the unfortunate issues is that a lot of the borrowing in the sector is from overseas lenders, could be bond issues, could be ECB lenders, could be multilateral lenders, and they will not be determined by the RBI's uh, guidelines. So to that, that extent, there is a fundamental problem, which is why we come to the second of our recommendations, which is that the government has to find a way of putting in liquidity into the hands of the discoms to pay the generators. And I think, as I said earlier, there's about 50,000 crore shortfall on the thermal side, but 12,000 on the renewable energy side. If the government, through its institutions like PFC and RAC and Nerida, can come up with a payment mechanism that allows them to pay into the discoms on the back of government guarantees, governments may require the relaxation of the 3% borrowing limits at the state level, and that money is then used to pay us. That will then allow us to service our debt and keep the wheels of the liquidity a machine churning. It will not allow, it will, it will prevent any defaults from happening. That will be positive. It will also give us the cash then to keep investing in capital costs, future bids, and so on, and will just allow us to really get economic activity going. So I think that is very, very critical. So as a next step, the government, having dealt with the issues of what is happening, I think now needs to move towards actually solving some of these issues so that we can keep, we can get the sector kick-started and moving forward. So I think that is very essential. The problem is we don't know how long this whole situation will last. And so therefore, we'll all have to be very fluid and very flexible in the way in which we approach this whole situation. And solutions that we come up with today, three months later, may be perfect and may put the whole problem behind us. In, in the, at the same time, however, it may be that we may need some more solutions coming up three months later. So I think all of us have to be very flexible in our mindset and in the way we look at this problem and how we deal with mm. solving it. Yes, uh, I, I would imagine that some degree of flexibility will be required. But Rahul Munjal, uh, uh, you know, as I pointed out, time is of the essence. And so far, there hasn't been any sectoral intervention from the government. The hope is that that will follow. Uh, now, 
as and when uh, you know something gets announced by way of relief measures what is the expectation on the industry's ability to be able to continue to operate as is you know so uh, there are two parts to this you know being a concurrent subject if you see from our ministry or from the secretary we've seen a lot of good tweets and we've seen a lot of letters go out to the states but till the state and the descoms don't accept it and the regulatory bodies don't accept it you know they are just uh, guidelines or guidances so we need very quickly for states to come along with the center and agree on one package on what needs to be done what needs to be done in terms of uh, a payment mechanism what needs to be uh, done on old dues which are due to us what needs to be done on the liquidity so you know it all actually revolve, revolves around liquidity today fortunately for us uh, being in wind and solar sector you know when the wind is blowing we're generating energy and when the sun is coming we're, we're generating energy so the energy is being generated it's not disrupted and it will not be disrupted either no matter if this problem goes on for another 3 months or 6 months so my my take is a little different we we need to look at this problem as a problem of now which is a lockdown problem which could last another couple of weeks maybe even a month then we look at a transition problem when we're transiting out of this you know it will take time for uh, companies to come back on will we have a b curve u curve or l curve it's anybody's guess will the energy will the companies mm. start consuming energy overnight will it take one month or six months only time will tell but we have to be flexible as someone said and keep saying okay today is a lockdown problem then there is a transition problem then we'll be in a recovery stage or how quickly can we take think back to normal and be business as usual and fourth will be what are the learning from this which we can implement for uh, times to come um you know this has been a very very good learning experience for everybody to see how vulnerable we are in many different uh, industries fortunately in renewables we can continue to generate power as 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 as, as long as the liquidity is taken care of mm mm-hmm. Okay, as long as the liquidity is taken care of, but that in itself is a big challenge. Rajiv, uh, add to the wish list that's been put on the table uh, by Sumanth and Rahul. Not too much to add, as uh, as uh, both have said. You know, we uh, we have an immediate problem, uh, but but uh, I would like to make a slightly different point. You know, uh, this if we look at the sector as a whole, uh, and I have been in this for about 25 years now. Um, the power sector did not need this uh, lockdown uh, for for us to be in trouble it has been a troubled sector what i would also or we would recommend to the government as well is uh, and in our country in particular we tend to be able to take very hard decisions in times of crisis Le- once we are out mm. of this and for this short term is obviously only injection of liquidity to the discoms that will resolve all the issues uh, and there are various forms which uh, Sumanth and Rahul have uh, already spoken about. But once we are out, can we use this? Can we not waste this crisis, please? Can we use this crisis to bring in the uh, the the, the uh, you know needed uh, long-term structural reforms? You know, distribution privatization, at least through the franchising route. Uh, the the uh, distortion in tariffs and the cross subsidies. Get rid of that. Uh, Lots of uh, initiatives with the ministries already on um, has been implementing, uh, you know, smart metering, uh, prepaid metering, and so on. Expedite that. So at least, uh, you know, once this crisis is over, uh, we leave the sector in a place. Uh, regulatory reforms, for instance. I mean, uh, we have recommended to the mm. government several times that uh, because of uh, what Rahul pointed out and Suman that we are in a concurrent list. Um, you know, the state regulatory system um, and the central regulatory system. Uh, do not always move together, uh, and various states move in various different directions as well. Is that uh, uh, I guess looking forward, m- my recommendation would be to add to the list of my uh, colleagues: is uh, can we not waste this uh, crisis and bring in the much-needed hard uh, decisions that we need to take for uh, for the long-term health? Yes, and those decisions have been much debated, much anticipated. Uh, uh, the, the expectation was that we would have seen some of those changes coming in in the budget itself. That didn't quite work out. Uh, Ms. Mr. Tanti, I'll give you the final say then. Uh, uh, you know, overall, while we wait for the tough decisions, as Raji was pointing out, and the regulatory changes as well, in the short term, uh, what is required, and in the medium term, of course, we'll have to see whether the government follows through on some of those reform measures. I think, uh, uh, Serene, it's a very clear. Uh, uh, it is a time crisis convert into opportunity, and huge transformation is required in the sector. 
to bring the technology age because we are still in a very old uh, technology formations in the whole value chain of the power sector. It is a time for us to convert in that and to bring down the very high degree of efficiency improvement and also to integrate the consumer patterns versus generating patterns and everything. It's enormous space is there. But well, let me tell you one area of the manufacturing. Today is a four, two million jobs in the manufacturing in a renewable energy space is there and uh, projects and service and the and the manufacturing. More than 4,000 SME companies are there. I think this time is the biggest our responsibility and challenge is to how to protect them, how to retain them, and how to retain the jobs. I think that is the short-term measures are immediate required from the banks and financial institute to fund the short-term requirement of these types of funding so that we can retain these areas. And we are already discussing with the, the our ministry and the secretaries, and we found very positive cooperation supports. I feel it will be implemented faster than we can able to protect 2 million jobs and 4,000 SME company in the sector, so that once the lockout is over, to ramp up the supply chain and to ramp up the project execution activities, it will become a smooth and stabilized very fast. So we should not remain too long period on, on a crisis and to stabilize. But the root cause solution is only one medicine is the liquidity. And that is the most important part. If government support that, I am confident the power sector will become more uh, uh, efficient and more agile to make this, manage the, these crisis situations to support the government also. Thank you. Well, Mr. Tanti, Sumansina, Rahul Munjal, and uh, Rajiv Mishra, appreciate you joining us here with your wish list uh, for India's power sector that was facing challenging times before COVID-19, and it's facing even more challenging times post this crisis. But of course, there are short-term fixes and long-term solutions that will need to be factored in. For now, from all of us here, many thanks for watching.